Reparations Now, available at reparationsnow.com and also on Tubi. Okay, so we, ETM is back with another in the news. Sadly, today is the anniversary of the Birmingham uh, church bombing, the 16th Street Baptist Church bombing that happened on September 15, um, 1963. Survivors of the Birmingham church bombing say GOP culture wars bill are trying to erase their history. 60 years ago, four black girls died inside the 16th Street Baptist Church. The survivors of the bombing are still fighting racism. Lisa McNair drove from her home in Birmingham to Alabama State Legislature in Montgomery last year for a forum about the uh, divisive concepts, legislation being pushed by state Republicans. The GOP bill would have severely limited how educators could teach about race and racism. McNair believed the bill would force students to learn an inaccurate account of American history and about the tragic incident that had devastated her own family. When it was McNair's turn to speak, she stood at the microphone with a picture of her sister. Quote, I too want to oppose that bill because I feel that the bill will inhibit the teachings of the life of my sister, Denise McNair, end quote, she said. Quote, her story is not CRT or whatever that is because I really don't know and I really don't care, but it's true history. End quote. CRT refers to critical race theory, a college level academic theory about systemic racism. In recent years, Republicans have used the term to refer to any education about race and have increasingly sought to remove such lessons from the classroom around the country. 60 years ago, on September 15, 1963, McNair's sister, Carol Denise McNair, was one of the four black girls that was killed in the bombing at the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham. The bombing of the predominantly black church outraged the country and helped fuel the civil rights movement. I believe we have a video to go along with that. Uh, Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson um, made an appearance at the church today and had a few words to say. Six decades later, the magnitude of that tragic loss weighs heavily on all of us because those girls were just getting started. They could have broken barriers. They could have shattered ceilings. They could have grown up to be doctors or lawyers or judges appointed to serve on the highest court in our land. They could have been any one of us and we could have been any one of them. So today we remember the toll that was paid to secure the blessings of liberty for African-Americans. And we grieve those four children who were senselessly taken from this earth and their families and robbed of their potential. Wow, that is really tragic. Senseless, like she said. And 1963 really wasn't that long ago. Ashe to those four little angels. Ashe. All right, French ambassador held hostage at French embassy in Nigeria. French President Emmanuel Macron has declared that the French ambassador to Niger, Sylvain it, it, and other French diplomats are, quote, literally being held hostage at the French embassy, in quote, in the capital city of Nami. As tensions between France and the military junta in Niger, Niger continue to escalate. 
This diplomatic standoff stems from the military junta's seizure of power in Nigeria back in July, following a series of political crises in the West African nation. The junta initially ordered Ambassador It or It to leave the country and to subsequently revoked his visa, instructing the police to expel him. President Mohamed Bazoum was democratically elected two years ago, marking the first peaceful transfer of power in Nigeria's history since gaining independence in 1960. However, on July 26, members of his own presidential guard removed him from office, marking the third coup in as many years in the Sahal region. The coup leaders argue that their actions are intended to prevent further economic and security problems in the country, but their actions have been met with condemnation and sanctions from the international community. The European Union has suspended financial support to Nigeria, while the African Union has called on the coup leaders to return to their barracks. All right, so facing heavy sanctions, but still standing 10 toes down for their liberation. Good for, good, good for them in Nigeria. Absolutely. Okay, over here in America, <clears throat> we have a Bidenomics speech. Biden implies Black and Hispanic workers don't have high school diplomas and White House tries to clean it up in official transcript. And this is published um, today and this was a speech from yesterday, I believe on Thursday. President Biden has been ripped after he inferred that African American and Hispanic workers don't have high school diplomas in another humiliating gap. The 80-year-old president was touting the economy at Prince George Community College in Maryland on Thursday when he made his latest blunder. Quote, we've seen record lows in unemployment particularly, and I focused on this my whole career, particularly for African Americans and Hispanic workers and veterans. You know, the workers without high school diplomas, end quote. He said in televised remarks. However, according to the transcript released by the White House, there was supposed to be the word and separating the African American Hispanic workers and veterans from those without high school diplomas. Let's go ahead and and take a listen to it from, from his own mouth. We not only recovered all the jobs we lost during the pandemic, we've added millions more. We've seen record lows in unemployment, particularly, and I've focused on this my whole career, particularly for African-Americans and Hispanic workers and veterans. You know, the workers without high school diplomas, the lowest unemployment rate in 70 years for women now. He said what he meant to say. I I don't know. Maybe he should have said uh, for those African-American and Hispanic workers that don't have Maybe that would have been a little bit better. Maybe he should just keep black people out his mouth. Yeah, that'd probably be even the best route to go. (laughs) Come on, bro. (laughs) Dang. So anyway. Speaking of Biden, uh, what to know about the House of GOP's Biden impeachment inquiry? Speaker Kevin McCarthy has announced he has ordering House Republicans to launch an impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden, alleging a, quote, culture of corruption, end quote, involving him and his family. McCarthy has signaled the impeachment inquiry for weeks, but his announcement Tuesday comes at a time when he is facing mounting pressure from GOP hardliners who threaten to oust him if he doesn't follow through on a Biden impeachment. While Democrats claim the effort is, quote, extremist, end quote, McCarthy claims the move is not political, but aimed instead at getting answers the American people deserve. The White House is adamant that the president did nothing wrong and that there is no evidence to suggest otherwise after investigation into any relationship between him and Hunter Biden's business 
villains. All right, and in other news, Coco Goff made three million with her U.S. Open win. The real riches will soon follow. With her first Grand Slam victory, the 19-year-old American phenom is poised to cash in on her tennis success and winning personality. Coco Goff found herself compared to Serena Williams before she was even a teenager. And just as companies once did with the coat, a long list of brands has followed her development as as a tennis and marketing star with great interest. They watched as the the American prodigy reached the top of the world junior rankings at 14 and as she won her first pro tournament title a year later. They applauded her stirring first round victory over Venus Williams at Wimbledon in 2019 and this summer they marveled at her triumphs at the WTA tours Washington DC and Cincinnati events. With a 2-6-6-3-6-2 win over New, um, over New World number one, Aria Sabalenka in Saturday's U.S. Open women's final, the 19-year-old Goff's moment has arrived. Her first Grand Slam title after she fell one match short at the 2022 French Open comes with a $3 million winner's check pushing her prize money to $5.6 million this year and $11.1 million across her five-year pro career. Goff has also made an estimated $12 million from endorsements, appearance fees, and other business endeavors over the last 12 months before taxes and agent fees. But while she already comes in at number seven on Forbes' list of the highest paid tennis players, her earnings will surely reach new level Uh, new levels in the very near future and I believe we have a video to go along with that her chatting with some friends online about her big win somebody said pay off debts I'm 19 I don't have any debt I'm not in debt (laughs) like I don't have I'm not in debt I I live with my parents still Uh, so I'm not in debt um, I didn't go to college, so I don't have any student bills to pay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not in debt. I'm too young. I'm too young. My parents have never put me in that position to be in debt. So yeah, I have no, nothing to pay right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Must be nice. She's like, I don't know what that is. That's for y'all broke, broke. I know you're broke, bro. <laughs> but I mean that that just goes to show you how young she is. You know yeah. what I mean? She's I, I, I had that at 19, though. Wow. For real, for real. Did you really? Like, I mean, I think I had some college loans. I think, but I, it wasn't like super bad. Like it, like it became like real bad in my like early 20s. That's when like I could say, oh dang, here's some serious debt. But it wasn't like, you know, extreme debt or anything. It was maybe a credit card here, maybe, you know, a student yeah, loan. I was but paying it rent at 19, so I definitely Jesus. had had debt. But good for her and, you know, wishing her much success. And with the kind of money she's bringing in, she ain't never going to know what a debt is. If she manages, manages her money responsibly, yes, she will probably won't understand what debt is, which is good, you know, especially as black descendants, hopefully, you know, more of us can, you know, keep our head above water instead of like drowning in it, like the average American is. Um, uh, Let's give a shout out to our good sister, Althea Gibson. So for those who don't know, Althea Gibson, uh, born from on August 25th, 1927, and transitioned in 2003, September 28th, was an American tennis player and professional golfer and one of the first black athletes to cross the color line of international tennis. In 1956, she became the first African-American to win a Grand Slam title, the French Championships. 
The following year, she won with both Wimbledon and the U.S. Nationals, precursor of the U.S. Open, then won both again in 1958 and was voted Female Athlete of the Year by the Associated Press in both years. Uh, she was also was an avid golfer when I found out a little bit about her and a uh, very intelligent woman in addition to that. So, you know, on we all- On the shoulders of giants. Gotta stand on the shoulders of giants. So, you know, before there was a Coco Golf, before there was a Serena and Venus Williams, gotta give it up to the elder Althea Gibson who broke down all kind of color barriers and is doing her thing. So shout out to uh, Althea Gibson shout and Coco Golf. Althea. Shout out all the ladies. All right, so we have, uh, I guess what's been really in the news as of late is the, I guess the automobile strike is happening right now. So I uh, haven't been paying attention to the UAW strike, uh, what you need to know. And this is not the Writers Guild, the WAG strike, but this is the uh, automobile workers strike. Time has run out to avert a strike at America's unionized automakers. The United Auto Workers contract expired at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard on Thursday. The contracts covered 145,000 UAW members at the three companies, General Motors, Ford, and Stellantis, which builds vehicles under the Jeep, Ram, Dodge, and Chrysler brands for North America. With no deal reached by the contract expiration, the union said it has started targeted strikes against three facilities, one at each company. So, yep, it is beginning. It's like people are just starting to strike away. Yeah, strike away. We'll see how this goes. And uh, like you said, the writing strike is is still going on. It is still happening. They're waiting them out. And if anybody wants more information on this writer strike, uh, just go to this link that's within the uh, overlay here at CNN.com to get more information. Oh, you said writer strike? You mean automobile strike? That too. Yeah. <laughs> just put them both in there. Just put just put them all in just there. Put both of them. <laughs> all righty. So if you haven't seen yet uh, the interview uh, with Chris Lodgson, uh, please go check that out. And the the advancement of ACA 8, which will hopefully remove the involuntarily involuntary servitude clause, a.k.a. slavery here in the United States. For once and for all. Absolutely. And then, you know, we also talk about some other things, you know, the California Senate, his California Senate reparations pick uh, for any upcoming bill. So if you haven't seen it, take a look at that. Um, I know hopefully in our upcoming Sunday, if you haven't uh, checked us out, check us out Sundays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard right here on even the mass media group it's called road to reparations here in california where we're going to be talking uh more about the assembly because we already went through the senate um but we're going to be going on to the assembly yeah yeah get to know how these people vote uh, maybe even do a quick overview on the uh votes for aca8 that just happened yeah. was that yesterday all right Dang, I think it was. Or was it Wednesday? Or was it the day before? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it may have been the day before. Okay, all right. All right. Um, But yeah, so anyway, thanks everyone uh, for tuning in. Uh, Once again, Sundays at 10 a.m. Right here on Amy and the Mass Media Group. Please like, share, and subscribe. Tell everyone about it. And the Amazon affiliate link. Please go check that out. Go to our store at etmediagroupstore.com. That's etmediagroupstore.com to get all your reparations gear. Cut the check. Cut the check. All right, y'all. That is in the news.